understand Commissioner Roberts has some questions is related to the um, recent uh, objection resolution process related to the draft motor use map that was adopted by the Forest Service related to the Medford District. Um, and so I, I guess um, it, I understand some qu the questions. There were some questions on whether there was coordination required, whether the objection resolution process was somehow part of coordination or did it substitute for coordination. Um, and, and so I, I've done some research. I can provide some information and then if you have any additional questions. Or if what I've looked at, it doesn't answer your questions, then I'm, I'm happy to. Okay, and I will give the, the commissioners the email, sure. unless you guys don't have it, that I sent following up that email. I'm going to the record. <coughs> So as I understand, Commissioner Roberts uh, pointed out that there is a CFR related to the travel management rule, and there's a, there's a one sentence as uh, part of the Code of Federal Ed, uh, Regulations that the responsible official um, shall coordinate with the appropriate federal, state, and local governmental entities and tribal governments when designated national forest systems roads, national forest systems trails and areas, and national forest lands pursuant to the subpart. So uh, I, I guess there's, there's, I guess, multiple sort of questions. Um, this travel management rule does not appear, though I'm still sort of digging, to have been adopted pursuant to the National Forest Management Act. It was adopted pursuant to other statutory authority for the Department of Agriculture. So it, it's sort of an additional other coordination requirement. Um, I've done s some initial research, but it's difficult to tell if this draft or the motor vehicle use map is the designation of Forest Service roads. Um, because a lot of the roads that are already in the motor vehicle use map are already designated as Forest Service roads, and so it's it's uh, I, there isn't a lot of guidance to, 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 that I've been able to find that, can, that lets me definitively tell it what uh, Forest Regional Forester McWhorter did is falls within the concept of the definition of designating of National Forest Service roads or trails. Um, however, part of the, like, one of the concerns is, is that we have taken the position that coordination is supposed to be on, on the front end. Um, and that's really under the FLIPM uh, concept of, um, where it talks about early public notice of final decisions and the rest of it. Um, as we've talked about before, the, the U.S. Forest Service does not op operate under FLIPM, it operates under the National Forest Management Act, which does not have any specific coordination requirements, essentially, in the National Forest Management Act. There's a one sentence, and I'm about to sum it up, but thou shalt coordinate. Um, <laughs> what that means and what it looks like is not specified in either statutory or regulatory authority. This is a similar one sentence, thou shalt coordinate. Um, but the, as applied to the specific draft, uh, or the motor vehicle use map, um, the process did not begin when, when uh, the process to adopt this map didn't begin in 2015 when, when the regional forester came forward. Um, this has been ongoing since 2007. 2008. So this has been a nine-year process. This is actually the second or third draft decision that they've attempted to, to, to put forward. Um, so when the process started, um, the, this county had not sort of adopted a coordination policy or adopted a coordination ordinance or asserted its coordination rights. So I, it, it's my opinion that, that this, this rule um, may have applied to the draft to the, deci the recent decision. Um, I'm still doing some research to see that. However, because the process has been ongoing now for almost nine years, um, and we, we didn't sort of address the coordination or assert our coordination rights until sort of the end of it, we likely have <coughs> those rights. We, we haven't, we haven't, you can't sit on your, your you can't sit on a known uh, injury and then wait till the very end to, to assert it. I still, though, I'm still doing some research, and honestly, the answer may be I don't have an answer because there isn't enough guidance out there to give you on whether or not this rule applies to this particular decision, and this type of decision in general, um, and then if it does apply in general, whether it would apply to this specific one because of the timing of it. So yeah, when, when the Forest Service, uh, Regional Forester McWhorter came in, um, he was sort of, uh, this, that was the tail end of the process, here's a decision. But this had been an ongoing for, I think, eight or nine years at that point. And we had sat through many, in the last several years, we had, Commissioner Asher and I had sat through many of the listening sessions and made comments and stuff like that. But it is their obligation to coordinate, not our obligation to assert our coordination. It, 
absolutely, it is their obligation to coordinate if there is an obligation to coordinate. Um, however, this is one of, as I was saying earlier, this is one of those circumstances where coordination is, is not, it, it, there's no definition of what coordination means. Um, if this was the BLM, there is some specific, there's like eight or nine things that they're supposed to do. This is not BLM. So uh, we, we have taken the interpretation, and the county has taken the interpretation, that coordination by the US Forest Service should mirror what BLM does. Um, but that's not within the statute. And if I may, let me read 16 U.S.C. 1600. It says, as part of the program, it's uh, NEPA applicable to Forest Service require, requiring coordination. As part of the program provided for by Section 1602 of this title. Did you submit that? No, it's through my research. I have tons of it. If you want copies, I'll get it for you. The Secretary of Agriculture shall develop, maintain, and as appropriate, revise land and resource management plans for units of the National Forest System, coordinated with the land and resource management planning processes of state and local governments and other federal agencies. And I, uh, when I go to that meeting, and we are not giving, uh, Commissioner Breithal was pretty much cut off in the middle of his opinion by some gal out of college on the TV where K.S. Wild, one of their stakeholders and agreed with their system, was given tons of time, I feel, as Jackson County and for our citizens and for our land management, we're being railroaded. And I think, as a, as a board, we need to know where we stand on coordination. Are we going to demand it? Do you, and I would get you, I've been, I've been in tons of research, and there's, show me where I'm wrong, where there's, there is uh, that uh, congressional laws, there's uh, many references to applicable to Forest Service requiring them to coordinate. And that is at the beginning of the process. And if it isn't, they need to stop and, and get to us. It's been our position all along, and that's what we've been arguing at the local level, uh, regional level, local involvement for the piece of local forest super, uh, city, um, with uh, Jim Pena at the regional level, and that was the discussion that we had uh, when we had uh, Region 5 and Region 6. But I think we were there for part of that, part of that time uh, at the Forest Service Office when we at the S S F S F A C meeting. That was that same concept. How do we get to where we're doing this in the front end? and asserting those rights. Uh, we've also had that same conversation with Cynthia Moses Head, uh, with the BLM on the federal side, and with, um, I can't remember his name right now, it escapes me, but he's the same person on the who represents the Forest Service, uh, local representative of the county governments at the federal side. And we've had, I personally had this discussion with them, and they brought it back to the, national, the Chief of the Forest Service and the National Director for the BLM. They both agree that this, that's how it's supposed to be happening. Now, how it's supposed to be happening and how it's interpreted at the local level, it is, there's a disconnect. So they're helping us right now at the national side bring back that disconnect in some particular way. And that SSA, SFAC meeting is part of that piece where we're bringing in Region 5 and Region, region 6 uh, directors to be able to start finding that way to bring the discussion up and to have that piece. Uh, one of the, the discussions, I think I, I talked about this in my, my liaison report uh, right after that meeting. I think you were here, Rick. I don't think you were here for that liaison uh, report after the SFAC piece. Uh, uh, the, basic concept coming out of that was that we could develop some kind of local advisory committee with the Forest Service that, that has, that we have a seat on, that helps develop a lot of this policy and how we move forward with it. Now, it's a, it's a formal but informal policy advisory committee, and, and we have now obtained the help, uh, or I, I've had conversation with the president of the retired Forest Service or the retired federal government employees who want to see this happen also. They've offered to help with the process and I've been in contact with them to help form this committee so that we have this coordination piece put in place up front. The problem that is the disconnect that I understand it today is that the way the Forest Service does their planning, it's more of a collaborative planning process. So they have a concept, and then they bring everybody to the table, and then they bet the concept and say where we're going to go and how we're going to do this. 
they don't necessarily have a predetermined outcome. So it's the people at the table are, are moving this down the road, and that's kind of where that disconnect is. It's not bringing the local governments together first on what the plans are before the concept is vetted. So that's what was discussed at the SFAC and, and how we can move this forward in that little piece. So if, I think it's accomplishing exactly what you're looking for. I don't think it is because what you're being there is with stakeholders and concerned people. Those are cooperating this, this, agencies. The, the we should be met with directly. That's what I'm trying to say. That 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 council, so to speak, would be that local government, the government piece ahead of time before the stakeholders are brought in. That's what we're trying to create. That's what they are demanded to create. In fact, another of my research from an executive order, executive order 12898 says each federal agency must must analyze environmental effects, including human health, economic, and social effects of federal actions, including effects on minority communities and low-income communities when such analysis re is required by NEPA. Right, and that's exactly why when you were at that SFAC meeting, you saw the data collection that we were putting together on the communities based on the forest conditions and the forest management plans that the Forest Service bring together because we're starting to collect all that data to be able to use it in that exact same manner. But that forming that committee to be able to do that up front with that government to government piece prior to the stakeholder is the key that's missing. And I think the Region 6 Deputy uh, Director made it quite clear. He basically said um, the conversation on uh, big C, little c on coordination. That's that's his way of saying there's what local government believes and reads the, what the federal laws are, and then there's what the federal government reads and what they believe their laws are. So how we interpret here locally and how the lawyers on the federal side are interpreting that have a difference of opinion. So they're obligated to follow what their, their lawyers tell them, just like we're obligated to, tell, to follow what our lawyers tell us. So there's a, there's a disconnect here on how the law is interpreted between local government and federal government. And it's going to take some diplomacy more than anything right now to sort of work that through to get to where we need to go. Um, I, I, I completely agree with the, the demanding and the coordination and getting that forward. But it's going to take a little diplomacy because there's a fundamental disbelief from the lawyers on both sides. And that's the ambiguity that makes it ineffective and makes their that's what the diplomacy's got us where we uh, where and, we have nothing. And that's where I would I would agree. Um, that's been my experience. Is that you know I, I read it a certain way, and, and there are other lawyers who advise local governments to read it a certain way. And the the attorneys who work for the attorney general and work for the and Forest Service read the same statutes and, and come to completely different conclusions of what's required. Um, to a large extent, um, I, I've heard that some of the federal lawyers view that coordination is with plans, not with governments. So it's you just have to analyze the local government's plan. You don't meet with the local government. You just look at their plan to see how, how the, that adopted plan, you, you get a copy of the plan, you see how it works together. Even if it conflicts, their obligation is only to... Correct. Their obligation is to only basically look at the plan. They're under no obligation. They're, no one, and, and I don't think, I don't read the statute to require them to follow our plan. I, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't even. Most of our plans are on, online. I, mean, I don't know if they've asked for our plans. I don't know what extent they have. And I think that's one of the questions that there is. Uh, I know that we view, and, and I and I agree to some extent. We have a very good argument that coordination is more than just grabbing our comp plan, for example, right. and, and seeing how it complies with whatever their resource management plan. And they should be. They should be made to show some verification that they actually did consult our plans. I mean, if that's and, and if we look at the, so, so if we want to take a step back to a, to a different, and I, I, I'm going to say it's under this agenda item, but if we take a step back and we look at the draft resource management plan that we've been looked at, one of the objections that we made in that resource management plan was um, they didn't even show that they had looked at our plan. And so that was an objection is that how can you sort of argue that coordination has occurred? Uh, because they made a sentence, there's a sentence in that draft resource management plan that coordination has been satisfied. Yeah. One of our, our objections to the draft resource management plan specifically was, how can you say that when you, you, you don't, you, I think Jackson County as an entity got, had like one sentence, or there, I think if you did a, a word, word search of the draft resource management plan, I think Jackson County appeared like twice. So how can you say that there's been coordination with our plans if you didn't even, if you, if you didn't even draft? But as we talked about at the time, 
there may be a box of materials sitting in someone's desk that absolutely shows they've looked at our plans and they just didn't feel the need to put it in the report. So there's all kinds of, real, and really ultimately this is going to be resolved if, if a local government, uh, be it us, be it some other local <coughs> government in, in this state or another state, decides to, to spend the money and litigate and, and argue um, that, the stat, that this is what the statute says and this is how we interpret it and, and to get a court to agree with us or to decide that our reading of it is wrong. Um, it has been tried a couple of times in the past. Um, essentially, even when courts have found that coordination, even the, the, the federal, I guess, interpretation of coordination was not followed, um, the court doesn't find that the statute requires them to start over. Like that, that's not the remedy. Um, essentially, they get a. But there isn't any remedy. That, that is one of the fundamental problems. Is there's no remedy under the statute. So the few cases that have come out about this basically say, well, agency, you should have done this. Do it next time. And then they don't the next time. And then and the, the only time I've actually found where a court actually under coordination told the agency you have to start over was not under the statutory coordination was but was where BLM had actually entered into an agreement with a local government saying XYZ will happen as we draft plans. And it had to deal with a horse relocation uh, or resource management plan for, for wild horses, uh, Montana or Wyoming, one of those. And in that case, the court didn't find that the, the, the plan had to start over because of the statutory coordination, but it was a contract violation. The local government had a contract with the federal government that XYZ would happen. XYZ didn't happen, therefore, is, is it looked at stat cap contract revenues. And coordination is in no way uh, construed as a contractual agreement, which is, no. should be, in my opinion, because I mean, it's, it is an agreement between this branch of government and, and that branch of government, which. It, it, that is definitely one way. I would say that the federal government more views it as a statutory requirement <coughs> upon them, which um, we may or may not have standing to argue that they have violated. Well, and I should feel that the um, the reason for the all the backing we have with the the congressional laws is to prevent what they're doing, and that is closing our roads, closing our access to the um, to the to, to the, our federal lands, and um, without public participation, they have stakeholder participation. And obviously, from that meeting we went, there was uh, four wheeler groups that have trails that they are using that are being closed. And and we are that stopgap between the people and an overreach of the federal government. And we have these acts to, to rely on. And, and then ultimately, I, I mean, if this is the direction the board would want to go, I think we should probably discuss it in the session. But it would be it would be a potential litigation. Um, in the end, um, we can have our interpretation and the federal government their interpretation and really the only way to get that resolved is to, to decide to move forward with litigation. Well, I think too, uh, I think it's our stand via uh, the council because I know Devin Husky wrote the letter uh, that we were to take with us. He said, additionally, this is not part of federal coordination and we had no standing. And that was the fact that we went to this meeting and I don't think that's right. Well, so I guess there, I, I guess the objection resolution process has nothing to do with federal coordination. Maybe that was just how he worded it. So the the the, pro, the meeting that you were at was the objection resolution process. The objection resolution process is a separate process than coordination. So under the objection resolution process, to have standing to make objections, you have to have participated in someone at some point in the past. Um, from what we could look through the record and through the evidence available, our county had not objected previously. So we didn't have standing to argue our objections to the plan as part of the objection resolution process. That is a different question on whether or not the, the coordination had been met and whether or not coordination applied. It seems to me though just, just because they have the duty to coordinate with our plans, even though we didn't assert them proactively, we did still participate. I mean we may not have the, 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 the way that they, the way that participation is, is you have to have either appeared or it's similar to our land use process. Um, we 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 write a, a you have to be an interested party. You have to have appeared or provided written testimony to become an interested party. 
It's not written like that. That's but it. There's nothing in the written that says that. It says they must. Well, but that that's so. But then again, that's they must coordinate, which is different than who is allowed to file objections during the objection resolution process and who is considered to be an interested party. To and that should follow coordination. Oh, but absolutely. Yes, coordination should be. Well, it, it, and, that's, and during that dispute resolution process, there was one of the environmental groups that um, raised the objection for us being at the table and said, you did, you're not supposed to be here. You, I think you mm -hmm. heard that. Uh, we made sufficient arguments as we did participate within it from the beginning, and the Forest Service right then and there said, yes, they have, and we recognize their standing. With that being said, we were able to get a little bit of work done in there during the last hour of that, we got a little bit of callback on some of the road they, or stuff that they were going to close. We were able to call a little bit back. Uh, but like Joel was pointing out, that was a dispute resolution because the decision was already made and we were trying to dispute that decision. So the one of the things I, I want to point out is as we look forward into this uh, process, when Rob was here the other day prior to that decision or when, when it was coming out, he basically said he wants to enter into an agreement with us on how we are going to do this. Exactly what Joel was just referring to about having that agreement put in place. And he's willing to do that at the local forest level. Now, if he's willing to do that, I would say let's get that agreement written on how we are going to move forward with coordination with the Forest Service in Jackson County. That way it gives us something to fall back on. Otherwise, we're going to be in this cycle that we're talking about right now because we have no way that we come to a resolution on how we're going to move forward together. Right. And that agreement could say that we want this council that's prior to um, the NGOs having their, their say in the matter, that we're going to have a government-to-government -government relationship and we're going, to, we're going to talk about our plans and formulate what we're going to do, put that in the agreement, and then move forward. That way it's written. But then isn't that... What we talked about before in that agreement that supersedes our, our statutory coordination. Rights. No, I would argue it's implements. It's right. the impl it's an it's an, it's an agreement that implements and provides. And they're not going to say, well, that that satisfied our our. Uh, well, no, an agreement does would satisfy in a specific instance. A, a general agreement would not satisfy in a specific instance whether or not they had to coordinate. It's more of a and, and we've actually offered. So when when the county first adopted the the coordination ordinance. Um, we sent out to the various federal agencies a, an example agreement that someone had put together for us. Um, most of n most people didn't even write us back. A few people um, politely declined to enter into our agreement. Um, but that's sort of an agreement that, that it was not, this takes the place of coordination. This is how we're, because we have this one sentence or one paragraph statutory thing that we think says one thing, they think says another. And the agreement is essentially how are the two parties who are who are identified in the statute going to work to implement it. So it doesn't, it's not, it's supplemental to not a replacement. And, and I disagree when I heard when Robert Gordon was here. He had his plan and he told us his mind was made up and he was going to do this. And he liked our stamp of approval through whatever we wanted to call it. Well, and I guess maybe, and, and I and I agree with coordination, but ultimately. That was well, but ultimately, the, the decision is the regional forester's decision. Uh, it, it, this is not, the, the federal government has made it very clear in coordination that they're not seceding federal sovereignty to the locals and to the states. So it, it, it is the, the federal government and, and, and through its agents who get to make a decision, even if, even if it, they, can, they can coordinate with us and they can look at our plans and they can 100% disregard everything we say. They, they don't have to follow what we want. I mean, he, he has to take our input. It doesn't mean he has to listen to it. That's, that's been our stand since the beginning. I mean, when we very first started down this path, you know, we talked with him and we said, yeah, okay, well, you know, that's on the statutes. And it, it really felt to me like when they passed that law or that legislation, what they were doing was saying, okay, we've got to find a way to pat the governments on the head, yeah, and then right. we can go ahead and continue doing what it is that we want to do. So that's what the effect of the the law has been. But and each time we've had the opportunity to provide input in the past, and you know, when we got the NEPA or when anything else like that, um, you know, as I've been down that road trying to figure out, okay, so what kind of meaningful impact can we have? What kind of meaningful conversation can we have? 
because basically well, you could spend you know a hundred thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollars, putting together a wonderful uh, you know, presentation, etc. You know, hire outside contractors to come in, and, you know, that basically have the same level of confidence that the people that they've got on their side are doing, and what it will come down to in the end is nothing. But we're getting nothing out. Yeah, well, but part exactly. of this that's, um, that's code says public participation in the development of their programs is what they is what is written. Um, I no, it, interpret it, that differently. It absolutely is public participation, but just similar to, and I guess to use an analogy of our land use process, um, the public has it has a right to give testimony. Um, the public has a right to make its opinions dismayed. Mm -hmm. But the decision under state law and under our land development ordinance is up to this board to make. So. We could, as part of, to use an analogy, the marijuana regulations, we could have 100% of the people come and testify that they wanted, for example, no setbacks. You don't have to follow that. You can do whatever you want. Similar, that is similar to, now whether or not politically that is a decision you want to make is a completely different question, but legally you're not obligated to follow what the majority of people testify to during the land use process um, when we're amending our LDO. Similar to the federal government, and this is why a lot of the cases that have, the few cases that have done this, the courts have said, well, they didn't follow it, but no harm, no foul, because in the end, they have to look at our plans, they have to coordinate with our plans, but they, as part of coordination, they can decide not to follow our plans. It's a requirement to consider our plans, not a requirement to follow our plans. Well, and I think it's our job to see that they see our plans. Oh, absolutely. And that they uh, respond to them, and that has not been done. Absolutely, and that, that was one of our main objections when we finally had an opportunity in the, in the draft resource management plan. That was one of our main objections was, is there's no evidence that they actually did the minimal amount that the statute seems to require. Even with the Forest Service, with their yeah. own closures, they have not done that. And, and as Jill pointed out, this is a, this is a nine year process. It moves very, very slowly. That, what we, that meeting we were at the other day was the final decision after a nine year process. So, that's the frustrating piece, is because as commissioners, we're coming in at 11.30, the 11.30 hour, or 11.45, and then trying to make an impact or a difference on something that's been moving forward for nine years. And that's a very hard ball to stop rolling, especially since we, it may or may not have been there from the beginning, because we may not have had our, our policies in place or our ordinances in place from the beginning, as Joel pointed out. So that's that's kind of why I'm looking at this whole thing, and, and I'm, I'm hearing the feedback on the federal side, the feedback on the regional side, and I'm hearing it from our local forest supervisors saying, let's get an agreement put together on how we're going to proceed, and then if we, they violate that agreement, we now have some teeth to be able to move forward on, because that's what the case law shows us, because without that document, we really don't have that ability or case law to be able to fall back on to say that you violated your agreement. So what case law are you going to The one that the jewelry So, referred so there, there, there is the one case that sort of, <laughs> and in the end, as I understand, um, and I, I would agree to, to a large extent, we feel that if coordination does not follow, they need to basically go back to that step and start over. The one time that, right. the one time that a court has required them to do that was not under statutory coordination was but was because there was a, co a violation of a contract on how the coordination was going to be implemented between BLM and uh, whatever was the local government involved that was suing. Um, and honestly, and one of the concerns, and I know that's sort of what we feel is the, the remedy would be is you need to go back to the beginning. And, but the few other cases that have sort of sued is the courts have said that's not the remedy. The remedy is we found a violation, but essentially it was a harmless error you could have made any decision you wanted anyway, even if you had documented coordination with the plans. Um, so we're not going to undo the, the federal agency decision. And you could run down the path of, you know, having Joel put together a contract that you're talking about and represent that to the federal force and do mm -hmm. and and say, let's, let's get them to do it. But you have to understand that on the other side, you know, if I was counsel or uh, uh, advising uh, them, I would say, no. I don't think there's any chance of it. Or nope. It would strengthen our position and our, our recommendation. Because it would weaken theirs and just right. make one more hurdle for them. And it's my view, our, our position is strong because we have so much in law that, that documents it. And, and we can just fiddle around and, and go to their meetings and waste our time, which have, has no teeth to it, you know, or, or make a stand as a board, but we, we expect with our, our public.
public lands in Jackson County. I agree with you wholeheartedly that, that when I read the federal law, it, I would say that it's on our side. But the recent decision on the federal side of the AFRC case, that they basically came back and said they had no standing. The way the laws are intertwined and things out of the blue can affect what that means. Even How can you say that there's been no impact to the people who filed that lawsuit? Uh, there was a se severe impact that the say that they have no standing was just amazing. That blew everybody's money. But so the government's a listed. But that's where, that's, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. If the, some of the brightest attorneys in the nation right now are trying to solve this on the legal side, and they just got their butts kicked in the in the DC court on this issue, and that that on a left hook that they did not expect to have coming. So now they're trying to reposition and file new suits to be able to get down that path again. And I think you're gonna, as you move forward with the uh, ONC board, uh, you're gonna learn what some of that that litigation is, what's been done, and how they're looking to move forward with that litigation. And I think that's the place for that litigation to occur, not necessarily out of Jackson County's coffers. Well, I'm not asking for litigation. I'm asking for where our board stands and where we're going to stand on coordination with these guys that come in and say, this is what we're going to do. Well, I mean, we, we have drafted letters of our position and, brought, and, and short of a, a lawsuit um, filed. I think that's really, I mean, if, there, if there's a better way for us to assert those <coughs> to make our positions known, I'd like to hear it. I want to, you know, Rob McWhorter said, I, I will enter into agreement with you. He said that at that meeting the other day. I want to, I want to call him on. Okay. Yeah. All right. To approve his plan. You, you no, know, to enter into an agreement on the coordination piece and how we move forward. That's what he agreed to the other day. And we, we go back and listen to that. That's what he did. We have agreed. Not with the local forest. With the forest service. It's, it's right in here. No, we right don't here. have 16 a, USC 1600. That's their federal law. That's not an agreement between our government and their government and how we're going to work together. And that's what we're referring to. It, it, it essentially, it, it, so what, what is I understand and what I would call it wrong is, so we have the National Forest Management Act, which says that they're required to coordinate, but it doesn't, it, it, I read the law and, 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 and other local government attorneys read the law and we think it means X, Y, and Z. And, Honestly, it's so bad that the, the U.S. attorneys read the law and they think it means Alpha, Omega, and Zeta. Like, we're not even in the same alpha. Um, and so it's, so we could absolutely move forward with litigation in an attempt to have a court agree with our interpretation of the law. Um, likely, the, the federal government's not going to sue a local government over coordination, so Really, they're going to continue to follow their attorney's advice and their interpretation of the law until such time as some court tells them that they're wrong. Really, that is our option. Um, I, 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 litigation is essentially, uh, other than sort of per, uh, participating in the process, and litigation is really the only way that we can resolve this issue. Um, absent an agreement, as, as Rob McWhorter and Doug has mentioned, um, they're willing to enter into agreements. So we have a, a law that says X, but it doesn't tell us how to do X. And what we have proposed in the past, and what the, the board's previous board's position and what the county's position has been until it's changed, is we think that there needs to be an agreement to talk about how do you get to X. X is a goal, not a, not a path. And so the agreement would be to, to set up a path on how to get to the goal of X. How, do we get, how would I see a copy of what they, their interpretation is? I don't even know if it's written. I just know it's been, uh, we've had BLM people in here who told us what it means. Um, I, I could probably get you some, it, it, we kind of have to do some tea reading, so I, I, there's a couple of, of the court cases where, you, where the court talks about this is the decision, and so you can do some tea, tea leave reading to figure out sort of what the other side was arguing um, in that position. I know the, the uh, I'm not sure if it's Forest Service or BLM, but one of them came in here and made it, I think it was BLM, made it very clear that their, that their advice that they're getting from regional and from the attorneys are that coordination does not mean what we think from their perspective. We don't have copies of their answer to the complaint of, of previous lawsuits. I mean, we could, uh, yeah, we, we could, I, I, we haven't, uh, I'm sure we do, um, or we could pull them very easily, but. Um. Yeah, I think you could, the, the BL, if you want to understand, like, on BLM's side, what they believe coordination is, they put out a coordination guide, 
and that gives you exactly what their belief the coordination is about. Um, I think you already have copies of that. Mm -hmm. It's pretty yeah. clear. So. So I mean that, that yeah I've forgotten about the, the the BLM has sort of a coordination. They have a guide there, and what their belief is the coordination. Is. And I think it sort of falls in line of we're required to look at your plans, but don't so have it's pretty clear until you start interpreting it, and that is always when it comes in. Uh, absolutely, two different interpretations, or more than that, always right. and, and arise. That's really where the court sort of that's what the court's role is: is that when different parties have different interpretations of statutes or contracts, is they're the ones who arbitrate. Uh, but I, I mean, absent sort of getting involved in litigation, there isn't. The, the count, there, that's really going to be the only venue where the county can get some sort of affirmative enforcement of the potential rights of the county and, and we all think that we have. Um, so far, the board has not, we've not been inclined or we haven't directed the staff to go file a lawsuit. But I mean, we, we can continue to make our position known um, as this board has done and as, as Commissioner Roberts recommends, and I would agree that's absolutely what we should do. Uh, but until sort of we go and, and want to file litigation and attempt to go down that path, um, that, that's really where you're going to get a third party to enforce. Well, I, I don't think he sent Robin Border anything strong that said, you know, you met with us, you have your plans, you have not coordinated with us. And as far as we see, as my thing, as far as we see it, their plans aren't conducive to our county. They're, they are. You know, closing our woods. On that dispute resolution process that we attended that meeting, that is an annual decision. There's nothing to make him reverse that decision next year. And he said that in the last few minutes of the meeting. He, goes, he said that every time he yeah. So he, he can change his decision at any time. So if there's something that we can work out with the user group, that they want to maintain. And that was one of the things that was very clear in that meeting, that these were areas that were being abused by users. They had concern over um, uh, special species or plants or whatever that might be being destroyed. So if they could work out some kind of user group participation, because they didn't have the money for everything, that the user group maintains areas and they do the policing and stuff like that, they said they could open things back up and they could start working with people. And then Rob made that very clear. So I mean, it might be part of our job as, as commissioners to sit there with the user groups, which some are represented on our NRAC, to be able to say, hey, let's take a look at what's going on here. Let's see where we could coordinate with some of these user groups to open some things back up and, and come to an agreement with the Forest Service on how to get that back open. Um, and that's why I'm saying some of that diplomacy piece would come into play and how we do that. But, Coming into those user groups and having that, that that's why I keep coming back to this agreement with the, the court, with Rob, that he agreed to enter into, saying this is how we can get there. Now, a, a Schedule A agreement that we've been talking about, one of the things that we submitted to the Forest Service several years ago, because they talk about money. They don't have the money to maintain everything, is there, is there a, a discussion point? Um, one of the things that we threw out on the table was a Schedule A agreement with the Forest Service so that uh, with, uh, with the county, because we can do things cheaper than they can, and they could pay us to maintain stuff. Uh, and so, because we can do more mileage, so to speak, for, for less money. So there's different ways to achieve that, but how do we get there is the process. And it's not just saying, hey, banging our fist on the table, this is what I want, this is what you shall do, but coming up, just like what we ask the people when they come to the mock podium, Give me an option. Give me some ideas. How can how can we be more effective together? And that's why I think that we need to get that, that committee together with the Forest Service and the county and the local governments to be able to say, this is how we can be more effective. This is how we can do more for the community with the limited dollars that we have by working together. Because we're partners literally in government to be able to make the whole thing work for everybody. And it's my view that that stand is a cooperating agency. And you must throw out coordination law and just be cooperating. Well, uh, and, and I guess it depends on, on I'm sorry for interrupting, but co so cooperating agency is, is, a, is a specific legal term under the National Environmental Protection Act. So a cooperating agency, at least in general under state law, 
federal law, so there may be other sort of context. But in general, cooperating agency means the, the federal agency is intended to take a specific action that requires environmental analysis under NEPA. The, the agency itself may not have the expertise to look at all of the various multitude of things that NEPA requires. So it is authorized under NEPA to go out and talk to other agencies who may have more expertise in specific areas to provide it guidance to make those NEPA related decisions. So a cooperating agency is not, we work together to address how to pay for roads and stuff. That, that's cooperation and, and I guess the generic dictionary. But not coordination. But not coordination. But coordination, again, has, has, in my opinion, at least from what I've seen in the statute, the way that I interpret it, it it's not about, I, I think you can work together with someone and they can still analyze and coordinate our plans with them. I, I don't see a, a, a anything that would say that if we, I, I think we could be a cooperating agency underneath that and have coordination. There's nothing, they're, they're not mutually exclusive positions. We can have they can coordinate with our plans when they're drafting land and resource management plans, as well as enter into cooperating agency status. One of the issues that we've had in the past is BLM. There was one, I don't remember the specific action, but essentially um, they wanted to bring us in as a cooperating agency under NEPA, um, which, would, which is, a, as I was saying, is we're a local government who has some special expertise in the area that they have to do analysis under NEPA. But one of the requirements in the agreement was that this sort of satisfies our coordination rights. And that was one of our, my concerns was, well, hey, coordination and cooperation are two totally different things. One is about whether or not our plans are compatible with your plans, and one is about whether or not we have special expertise on some sort of environmental issue. So becoming a cooperating agency does not specifically relinquish any coordination. No, Unless it's stated and, and, and in that particular case, that was one of the issues was is that the language that they had initially proposed and, and were sort of stuck on was they, they had taken a position that cooperation was coordination plus. Right. And that was the RMP. That, uh, that was the RMP that they brought everybody in on and they refused to participate in the Rocky representative of the OC County, Jackson, Michigan County refused to sign on with that piece. Because they wanted us, because they were taking the position that in that case, cooperation was cooperating under NEPA was going to replace coordination in, in, the, in this board and other. I agree with that. I agree, and I think they, they substitute a lot. And I think until they do coordinate, we have no business cooperating. And, 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 and that absolutely can be the board's position. But again, I, I the way I read the statutes, they're not necessarily mutually exclusive. We could be a cooperating agency and still um, bring action if the board's so directed to enforce coordination rights. I think we can effectively look for incremental improvements as well as fight for you know our, our overall coordination rights and what you're talking about too. I don't think they're mutually exclusive anyway. Um, if, if we can bring about, I'm a little skeptical that even if we you know, put together this committee and, and user groups brought forth some sort of plan, I'm still a little skeptical about anything happening. Before. Of course, we're all skeptical because you know it, it's always until you try, you never know what the problem is going to be like. Um, I can take an example here, uh, Garfield County, Colorado. Uh, John Martin is the commissioner who brought this to my attention. They were doing a lot of the uh, same process for travel management plan plans, closing the roads and all that kind of stuff. And they had a bright plan the federal side, shifted policy, it's closed and let's post it over. Because that's what is driving a lot of this. Mm -hmm. it, it, the federal policy has been open and let's post it closed for a long time recent change in the administration's decisions coming out of the uh, vice president, if I understand it to be correctly, um, basically change policy and says close and let's close it open. What Garfield County did is they took a proactive stance and said we understand that this can have a major impact to our community because they are a very recreational BLM Forest Service type community like much as we are. What they did is the county entered into an agreement with the Forest Service. And the county actually, because they had a sign department, they actually made all the signs and produced the signs and then went and posted the signs out on the federal land. Now, we don't have that authority unless there's an agreement in place to do that. Now, at that point in time, yes, the county spent twenty or $30,000 doing this. But what they did 
is they posted everything open. And they did that with an agreement with the federal government. And without that, without that, that agreement that Rob was talking about, something like that would not even be possible because we don't have any authority whatsoever over that land without some type of agreement in place to do whatever we want to do. So, and that's, that's one example of what was done in a different community to help keep those roads open. And that it took a lot of work between the commissioners and the local forest supervisor with a very positive discussion and dialogue to be able to get that done. So, and it, it, it solved a lot of issues. Did the local county pay for it? Yeah. Do we have to make a decision if that's something that we're willing to do financially? Yeah, that would be a, a, based on whatever deal. That's something for us to decide. Um, one of the things that is being discussed right now on some of the counties up north is being able to use Title III funds. They're looking for a, a modification on the federal side to change the designation of Title III funds to allow it to be used for active law enforcement on federal lands. Now that's giving up money that we would have normally for a search and rescue in other areas but to be able to be put into law enforcement on federal lands. Now, why would they want to do that? And it's essentially the same discussion that you heard during that dispute resolution process. There's not enough federal law enforcement out there taking care of the problem people, much like what we heard in our, in our hearing last night. There's a few people causing problems, and then everybody has the regulation. So putting more law enforcement out there to stop the, uh, the poor choices or to reduce those poor choices from happening has more of an impact to allow people to continue on with business that other people don't do as, uh, as a negative thing. So, but that was a, that's a decision by those counties to give up something to be able to be able to make more recreation possible on the federal land. So those are decisions and discussions that we can have as a board, but they're, they're specific in the areas that sort of accomplish exactly what you're asking for, Commissioner Roberts, is to find a way to get to coordination. But it's built on that relationship that we have with those supervisors. Because without that relationship and having that, that and being in their office and being at the table with them, they're not going to give us. Because they don't even know us and they don't understand our position. And they read the laws and their attorneys are telling them something different. So they're getting a whole piece of it. There's the old saying, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. And I think <laughs> we've been at the table, off the table for a long time. So we're trying to get off the menu right now. And it takes a long time to get off a federal menu when you haven't been participating for a decade or more. It's, it's not an overnight process. It takes, the federal government moves very, very slowly. I mean, I'm, I'm so frustrated. In fact, this last... We understand 1526, right? Um, the piece that died in, in our previous Congress. Uh, we revised 1526 during this this last piece, this last session. Um, the administration, the, the current administration, says we're on board with this. It gave us exactly what we needed with our categorical exclusions. It gave us what we needed to get back to work in the woods. And I was extremely frustrated when the Republican out of uh, Alaska, Murkowski, killed the, killed the deal because it didn't do enough for Alaska. But yet it would have helped the entire nation with everything else, and it would have put people back to work in our woods and opened up and increased logging here in Oregon. But it, it was everybody's frustrated because the, the Republican that we all were counting on to get it done sort of dropped the ball on us. And she was the chairman, chairwoman for the Natural Resource Committee in the Senate. So otherwise, we would have that legislation today and be passed and signed by the, the president because everybody committed to it. Well, so that's, that's, uh, that's the frustrating piece. There's always these little pieces that it takes so much relationship to get it done. Well, I'm just talking about coordination. And I just think it's we're not standing on it. I think they come in, whether we have a relationship or not with them, they tell us what they're going to do after the fact. And I think we need to know we're going to stand on it. We pass as much as we want. They interpret it as, as different as they want to, but it's a black and white. And so I feel like we're kind of getting a getting note of mine. They have a lot of lawyers. We have a, a good stand, I think, with our, our, our uh, ordinance on it. Our ordinance in, in, is in place, and that pretty much says where our stance is. We just need to maintain that position. If I'm not I mistaken. Agree. 
Well, it, it, absolutely, and, and I guess that, that um, and I absolutely agree, our ordinance is, is coordination in the field should be implemented. I think it's very clear how we interpret the statute. Um, they, again, they differ. If you get, I think you'll probably be on coordination, but they, they think it's pretty clear. They, they disagree with how we think coordination works. Um, and then ultimately, if, if we, we, every time the board so directs, we put together letters to send out holding our position and can do that as, as appropriate. Um, and, and ultimately, if we want to move forward, it would be a litigation and an attempt to have the court uh, intervene and, and resolve the issue. Can I ask a question? Mike, Joel, this is you, I guess. Sure. My position as a commissioner, as I go out and I argue this uh, issue and I discuss this issue on the state and federal side, I always fall back on our ordinance. Mm -hmm because I kind of feel like that is my job because that is our local law that we created here locally and it's my job to uphold that local law. If we're going to change our stance on coordination, we need to change the ordinance. Well, because I, I can't not support our local law. And that's my moral piece. Is that's why I understand it coming and, out there. And, and I guess I would be, I would need to know what you would mean by change our stance on coordination. Um, the, the, our, our ordinance sets forth the county's position as it relates to coordination and what we feel that the process needs to be. Um, I believe the ordinance speaks to the, an agreement between the, the individual federal agencies and the county to implement the process of coordination. Um, I, I guess ch it, change the stance would be as if we want to abandon coordination. Um, as, as a policy, I think we would need to adopt the ordinance or to, to do something to the ordinance um, because the ordinance is, is like all our ordinances are, are policy positions or, or, or what the county feels and they're legally enforceable policy decisions I mean that's what laws are laws are policy decisions um, ordinances statutes regulations are all legally enforceable policy decisions um, so I guess but on a case-by-case -case basis I don't believe there's any ordinance that requires the county to assert on a case-by-case -case basis every, I, I guess I, I need, I would need to know, to, to sum up, I would need to know what you mean by change our position on coordination to know if we needed to change something on coordination. And, and it doesn't sound like so far Commissioner Roberts wants to change our position on coordination. No, that's what I'm trying to say. I hold it. We want to hold our, call, our, yeah, our and ordinance that, is what I'm just referring so to. So is there a specific action plan that you have uh, that you would like to see us pursue? I mean, other than, you know, philosophical. I just want us to stand totally on our coordination when Forsters comes in, when BLM comes in with their plans, which they have done over the past year and told us what they're going to do without the benefit of our input for our citizens and our land in Jackson County being, being considered. And so the motorized vehicle use, that, that one was done before we being proactive serving our the, I mean, the, the original decision which would have implemented what uh, Forest Service or, or Forest Supervisor yeah, Forest, Forest Supervisor recorded uh, last year the original decision was I think 2008 um, and then that decision got uh, for a variety of reasons I don't necessarily know if they were identified was brought back and revised um, but so yeah, I mean that had been an ongoing thing, but the whole process itself, so he, when, when they brought back the decision to make a revised draft decision, they didn't start the process over, they sort of just changed the decision. But yeah, that, that original decision was made in 08 or 09. Right. And they have the right to revise it. Under Absolutely. coordination. I mean, he, could, he could do that. He could take a different stance and say, well, what do you guys have in mind? But he didn't. And it's been my observation that we have been a lot more assertive and a lot more proactive with our coordination rights since that happened. I mean, I wasn't here that, but I think that's something that's definitely been more top of line and you know, priority um, with this board and, and previous. I, I can tell you in the, in the three years that I've sat in the chair, I have seen a ramp up on the assertion and from the board's position. And I have seen this board closer to a potential litigation decision than I've ever heard the discussion before. So from this, from a, the Board of Commissioners of Jackson County. So I mean, even, even in the last three years, the board's position has modified 
over time to get to where we're at. And the frustrating thing is even though that's the case, there hasn't been a lot of fruit that has right, been there for well, I, I, And I sort of you guys felt the same way about the coordination, what the stand is, and what we're seeing, and, and the support from county council. I think we're all on the same page. Yeah, and, 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 and again, uh, just to go back to Devin's email, uh, and it may just have been how he wrote it, and, and if that's the case, I, I don't think his email was intent to say that he felt the coordination didn't apply in general, but the objection resolution process itself was not coordination. They were, they're, they're separate processes. That's right. And that's what, that's what his, I, I've spoken to Devin, that's what his intent was to convey in the email was, that when you when we filed our objections or, or sort of whether we had standing to file objections or whether we had standing to, to, to participate in the resolution process had nothing to do with coordination. It, it was its own process that was being followed. Can we, as a board, I, I know you're looking a little bit at it, something we can move forward with. Can we, um, when was the last time we went over our ordinance? Has this board taken a few moments in the work session and gone over our, our coordination ordinance as a group? That's just next on the agenda. <laughs> or maybe comparing it to Baker, Baker County. Well, uh, next on the agenda is more to talk about what Baker County oh, okay. has resources to find. Well, we should talk about ours. So let's, let's put an agenda sure. item coming up on, right. on the Tuesday work session. Um, our coordination ordinance. Oh, review. Tuesday. Not next week. <laughs> <laughs> but a review of our coordination ordinance. And and what potential action items that we could take to help assert those coordination. So that's yeah, that's a good. great idea. Let's do that. Okay, so then are we ready to move on? Any other okay. ideas? Okay. Yeah, well, with that, with that I, I'm there, I would like to I'm looking I would like to bring our interact committee. Um, invite them to that discussion also. Because well, they're gonna, as we see these things coming through, there our energy and natural resource committee is the one that actually sort of filters a lot of that stuff and brings it forward. So, um, so I'll have them invite them also. I think to be important. Anyone's invited? Okay. Uh, only, but since NRAC is a as an advisory public body, I'll have to be noticed in the joint meeting in case it's okay. before. Right. That's, what sure. trying, okay. that's what I'm trying to do. All right, so we'll move on to item number three, discussion regarding council concerns with the potential creation of the Jackson County Natural Resource Plan based on Baker County Natural Resource Plan. I feel I've never spoken this much before the board meeting in my life. <laughs> 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 I think it's all about my concerns. So, uh, I was forwarded a copy of, Baker County appears to have adopted what they are, they are calling a, a natural resources plan for the use of uh, lands within Baker asked to take a look at it and, and provide some guidance on whether or not I thought we could as a county sort of just copy and paste what they had done and sort of adopt it as our own natural resources plan. And before you start, I should say, I sent it to you because I had heard they are making strides with BLM through their plan. Okay. So, so and I guess so I, was, I was here to sort of, one of my, I have a couple of concerns and, and one of the major concerns is that their, their natural resources plans attempts to place coordination processes on both the federal and the state government. Um, I have not been able to find anything that would sort of create a parallel process between local governments in the state of Oregon that would exist between the local governments and the federal government under FLIPMA. So one of my concerns is that that plan as drafted attempts to create state county coordination for resource management of state lands. Hmm. Um, another of the concerns I had is that there, like, it attempts to basically create a county right to enforce what's called the Data Quality Act. It's a federal statute related to the use of data by federal agencies. Um, and, and the plan is adopted by Baker County essentially says that the federal agency shall follow the Data Quality Act, which they're already required to do. It's a federal statute they have to follow. But then attempts to create a county right to enforce it if they don't. The courts have been very clear that there is no third party enforcement of the Data Quality Act. So the courts have made it clear that we as a third party don't have a, a, a right to basically sue the federal government if we think there's a violation of Data Quality Act. So I think that's a problem. Baker County plan. What is the data quality? 
uh, they're supposed to use the best available scientific uh, evidence when it comes to scientifically, this is a summary. Mm -hmm. Basically, the, the best available scientifically uh, verifiable evidence when making their decisions. They're supposed to use good data as opposed to it, it, absolutely, but the courts have made it very clear that it's sort of a requirement from Congress upon federal agencies. There's no, there's no right. Gen, I guess to back up, in general, unless a statute specifically gives a party a right to enforce it, there's no right for a party to go out and enforce the statute. In this case, there is no, there's no mention of the local governments with, to giving them a right to enforce this act. Is there some specific entity that they say provides the, the best available scientific data? I, I didn't go into what were the requirements of the Data Quality Act. I just went into whether or not they will. Yeah. Um, yeah. The USDA. Yeah. One thing that, that covers my desk. One thing I should probably bring forward real quick is to know um, I did bring this particular document to the NRAC committee and ask them to look at the document, study the document, study our, doc, our, our plans, our comprehensive plan in the effort to start to create some kind of document similar to this for Jackson County. So understanding some of the legal concerns and, and discussing having those discussions uh, could give the NRAC some direction as we move forward with this, if that's what we want to continue. Uh, I guess some of my other concerns is um, the way that I've read the, the natural resources plan is it's not a natural resources plan for Baker County, it's a natural resources plan for federal and state lands in Baker County. So the way I read it, it doesn't apply to anybody's lands except for the federal and state government lands, um, which I think may be a, a, a legal, it, it might be a little arbitrary um, that, that they've adopted a plan just for basically lands that don't fall within their jurisdiction. Um, for example, our comprehensive plan covers federal and state lands, but it covers, it's the comprehensive plan, land use plan for all of Jackson County. We didn't single out, we didn't single out, and this is how federal lands are gonna be. We didn't create a separate plan for how we felt the comprehensive the plan should apply to federal lands. Well, there's a reason it couldn't apply to the entire county, or is this an oversight in, in making this it, It's how it's written. But I mean, was there an intent there? Or uh, I, I didn't go into sort of the intent of what they were thinking, but that, that's how it's written. <clears throat> so is it coordination only for federal lands anyway? Well, so, but coordination is about with our plans. So right. if we adopt a plan, and then they have to make, to coordinate our plan with what they're planning on doing. So it, it, I guess it's a, in a sense that they created a plan for the sole purposes of coordination. I think that is less defensible than creating a plan that applies to the county that they then have, that applies to the county in general that they have to then coordinate with. Is that? Yeah, I don't think about that one. Yeah. Um, I, I think that there, uh, that follow the definition of equipment. Yeah, I, I think that there's, uh, I think that they, that they attempt to require, or, or it, it attempts to sort of waive federal sovereignty on some things. Um, it attempts to tell the federal government what decisions the federal government would, would make, which is ex beyond what coordination requires, um, and essentially is an attempt to waive federal sovereignty. Um, I think that it attempts to, when there is coordination, um, drill it down to a level that isn't necessarily required. Um, it specifically requires, uh, it, the, the plan requires coordination on road closures on a road-by-road -road basis. So a plan would be, this is what we're going to do with the roads. And then you implement the plan by closing particular roads. The way that this is drafted, I would read it, is not only do they want coordination on the road closure plan, but when you go out and how are you going to close this specific one. Um, that is beyond my reading of, of what coordination would require. Coordination is sort of limited to plans, not actions. Um, same with noxious weed management. Um, on the road issue, though, doesn't it depend road by road how that road was created? It, when? It does, but that's not a, a plan to be coordinated with. So I guess there, there's a difference between whether or not, like, for example, it, it, 
the, and this is BLM, not Forest Service. Mm -hmm. So if the BLM were to adopt a tribal management plan, which I'm not even sure is a term that BLM uses because everybody uses different terms, but if they were to adopt a road management plan, it would be uh, similar to what uh, Forest Supervisor McWhorter adopted, but here's our plan for the road. The way I read this document is when they went and attempted to implement each road closure, there was supposed to be coordination. So there's plan and there's taking actions to implement your plan. So in essence, federal government would disregard this plan completely because it's invalid on the space. I, you know what, I, I feel that this, I, there, there are some parts of it that are savable. My comment to, when looking to Danny, my comment to Danny was, I think it could serve as a base. It's gonna require a lot of work and a lot of time to make it apply to Jackson County and to address some of the concerns that I have if we want to use it and create a plan that can serve as something that needs to be coordinated with. I'm not, my concern was just taking it as a, as a, as a document, you know, not maybe a little more work than writing out Baker and putting it over Jackson, but just as sort of trying to use it as some sort of 99% template to it. I, I'm not saying that it's not a good plan and it can't be adopted or, or modified. I just think that, that that it would be, it's much more than just trying to adopt it as a template. Right. Well, it's specific to that county. Right. Well, and some of the things that they call a plan, I think, probably aren't a plan. They're more of a policy statement. Um, for example, one of the plans is no roads will be closed. That That's not really a plan. It doesn't have any reasons why. It's just a one-sentence policy statement. But then they also, there's a, a, a plan that there's no alternative energy development on federal or state lands. So no, no solar, no biomass, like that, I'm not sure that that's, that would be what would be considered a plan versus just a policy statement. Mm -hmm. So I think in some of those things, we may decide we want to have no road closures, but I think we need to, it would require some data and drill down to, to identify what, why we were making those decisions as opposed to just a policy statement of don't closing roads or a policy statement of no alternative energy sources shall be developed on these lands. So what in it did you think was strengthen ours? Is there anything that Yeah, I mean, there are some. I mean, there, there are some plans that are actually, like the plans that talk about how lands are going to be used for forestry, farming, and, and ranching. I think it was for actually forestry and ranching. I don't think there was much discussion. So there is some discussion of sort of the value of those things. And, and it's, those are much more, I guess, substantive sections that talk about the history of Baker County and the societal benefits to, to ranching on those lands um, as opposed to, so those, some of those things I think are, are applicable in our plans that we could incorporate the concepts of in the Jackson County plan um, that without much more work, but I mean, it still takes some work to make it applicable to our county. We have a very different <coughs> history than Baker County, um, but I think so those things I think are very good and we could incorporate and create a plan similar to those for us. I think we could create a plan that dealt with road closure. I think it would take a lot more teeth and meat on it, or meat, not teeth. It would take more meat on it if that's sort of the plan that we wanted to have for the for the, the lands in Jackson County. I think one of the biggest sort of concerns I had was that this seemed to be really targeted as a, we're planning how to manage resources on only specific types of property. Um, based upon ownership, uh, most sort of resource management plans and, and sort of those global concepts are not targeted on property based upon ownership. They're more of a, more like our comp plan. Our comp plan applies across the county regardless of who owns the property. Okay. So I, again, I, I think it's workable. I think it's, but it, it's, my question was, could we just sort of uh, take it and, and do some minor work and make it as a plan of the county? I think that's wouldn't be my advice, um, but if we want to spend, if the county wants to spend some time and money, and honestly, I don't have the resources in my office. I don't think we probably have anyone who has the, the expertise to do this in-house. Um, so it would probably require going out and finding someone who had expertise to, to do this type of work um, to give it the meat that it needs to really make it a plan that when Forest Service or BLM was trying to gather our plans to coordinate with, we could give it to them. What I'd like to do, if it's okay with the board, is um, the NRAC, because you know, it's a lot of the NRAC committees here today. I think this would be a great project for the NRAC committee. 
if they had uh, adequate uh, resources to be able to develop something like this and to bring back a recommendation to the board for final approval uh, for us to do it, not necessarily for staff or whatever, but to be able to find those resources and to be able to move forward and create something like this. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to ask today is that uh, we direct staff to sort of work with the NRAC committee to be able to determine what those uh, resources are going to be, what the co potential cost on that would be, uh, what the potential benefit would be, what the negative side would be, and then bring that back to us for a decision and decide if we want to move forward or not. Yeah, just, just so I understand sort of what It's not, we're not, at this point, you're not directing us to build a plan, you're really directing us to come up with what it would cost and require to do so. Let's understand what we're getting into before we get into it. And let's do our, our review of our planning ahead of that. So our comp plan. Yeah. Or the, the, the coordination, coordination plan. plan. The coordination policy, yeah. Uh, coordination. Yeah. Right. That's what we're Coordination ordinance is what kind of this is aiming at. Is it those things? Uh, I think it's a little bigger than that, actually, a little more related. It's related, yeah. but, but not not. A, I wouldn't say exclusive. Well, I think it can't be. This is kind of the point you were making. Yeah, I, that would be one of my concerns: is attempting to adopt a plan that just focused upon things that needed to be lands that the coordination might apply to. Then we just have to keep in mind that it might just be spinning wheels because, again, we, we have a plan, we submit our plan. Even if we built the best plan in the world, you know, we submit that to them and say, look, this is what you got to coordinate with, then they still have the right at this point to say that was nice. And we looked at it. Yeah. I'd love to look at it. <laughs> but I see, maybe we should look at our plan first. And well, see if we feel there's yeah, before you proceed forth with the resources. I think that staff, they'll bring them in in the proper sequence. Do so you would like to see the discussion of the coordination yes. ordinance first. first, and then maybe some more, maybe an agenda item for some more direction as it relates to uh, additional resources. I think that's the best way. Yeah, it'd be a different after we discuss the coordination ordinance. 